We felt more comfortable knowing that the insurance was going to be backing us up, so we went with this contractor, and then just things did not go well. You ever hear that saying, can of worms? Big can. My God, that's ridiculous. This is crap. Things went from bad to worse. It's not just a house, it's a disaster. Oh, yeah, baby. Mike Holmes. On the money. You know, you look and you see and you think, oh my God, like there's a fire here and it's all full of smoke and stuff. But I honestly didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was pretty contained. There's a lot of damage here. My mother had been sick and she had been back home. And then shortly thereafter, she passed away. And I was saying that I just didn't have the time to arrange funerals and be on top of what they were doing here because there were a few things that did not go right. Things that, you know, I think they thought that they could get away with. And then shortly after my grandmother died, my dad died. It was hard. And the last thing we wanted was to worry about the house. You get things in perspective then. I just actually wanted to bring you in and show you what we've done so far, what we found, the changes that we have to do, and uh, really what we're going to do to fix it. Okay. You ready to take a look? Yep. It looks like a hell zone right now, doesn't it? No, not so bad. Not so bad? Compared to what it was before. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. I have uh, completely gutted your house. The raccoons actually had done such a number in this place, we decided to gut it. Uh, we did find more smell of smoke upstairs, so we had the company come back in, spray it. As a matter of fact, they sprayed so much that they uh, have removed all the smell of smoke, all the uh, bad contaminants from the raccoons, which I found out was so bad. Once I opened it up, I realized the structure needed a whole lot of attention. So it gave me the opportunity to say, okay, I'm going to make some changes in here, such as removing this wall, doing a brand new structure directly above, which will continue up to that end. And now I'm going to create an open concept. We have all new beams in the basement right from back to front. We have pulled out your boiler, your hot water heater. We're going to get you a brand new forced air furnace with air conditioning, a brand new tankless hot water heater mounted on the wall, so it's very efficient. All new structure from back to front. Uh, we are still temporarily braced until we've continued our structure. We have uh, quite a lot of structure work here. We've had to recarry structure load under the fireplace. We've lifted up this area. We've lifted up the whole center of the house now to level the floors because they were so badly dropped down the center. Actually, it was just like a roller coaster ride, your floors. So restructuring this area, which had dropped due to rotten wood. Uh, in the kitchen, so your floor was so down, and my point was to start from the basement and work our way upstairs. It's totally blown me away what he's doing, the amount of work he's doing. Uh, in this backyard, we found a little brick wall, which I did not know was there. That's coming down. It is a very big safety hazard, but worse than that, we have just found that you have an oil tank in the backyard. We had oil uh, when we moved in and we changed it to gas, mm -hmm. and they said that if it was buried in the backyard, it could stay there. Well, they lied to you, because by law, it had to be removed. I am really happy with with the changes. Just making it sound and safe, it's like, it's just so great. Uh, we also brought in an asbestos removal team, so everything was tented in. It looked like a, a, a UFO movie, of total suits, air masks, everything else with the guys coming in to remove the asbestos. Now they say, you're gonna have the best house on the street. And they said, are you selling it? And I said, are you crazy? <laughs> Can I give you a hug now? You just go relax, okay? Thank you so much. Don't worry about anything, okay. I like the house, I like the area. Um, we gave up a lot when we moved here, so. It means a lot to me to move back into my own home. <laughs> but I can really smell it, which is probably not a good sign. How far has it gone? What is it contaminated? Has it gotten into the water? Has it gotten into the neighbor? That makes me worry. Most definitely. We could have some in the ground. A small hole in the bottom. Well, that hole that's uh, failed in the tank. So it's really led to the release a lot of this product here. And it's gotten into the soil. You can see the stains oil down there. This is not a good sign. We can see this appears to be oil, am I right? Yep. Now we gotta do what? What we're going to do today is just take a couple of samples, have them analyzed. We're gonna come back and do a delineation and uh, clean up the... Um, so a delineation would be a determination? To find how, how far the contamination has gone and to what level we've got. Is that possible we could be digging the whole backyard? And it's not inconceivable. Okay. Interesting. Welcome to my world. I'm telling you. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> well, I think we're going to have a bit of a delay. I don't even know if, I think the only thing we can do is clean up the property. Uh, exactly. Because we don't even know. They may have to dig right to the end, right to the tree. We have no idea.
Exactly. Until we come back with those tests and how far it's gone, where it's gone to, I'm on hold. Well, anytime we're going to do a massive renovation like this, I want to make sure I go new windows and doors. The old windows were nice. That light in the glass, I liked it, a tractor, but it was broke from the fire. There was a lot of damage. There was rotten windows. For attractiveness, we're going new. We're going to go new on everything. I like it. This is a uh, integrated polyurethane foam. It's not a permanent water seal, but it definitely is an air seal. It will expand to about double its size. This actually adds strength to the window as well. Beautiful. The opening here is solid. When we're measuring brick to brick, I need we need 37 and a half. Would yeah. be nice. I've got 37 and a quarter. I'm gonna fire up the concrete saw and shave effectively about an eighth of an inch off, off each side so that this opening here is the same in here and as well on the other side. We're gonna start some plumbing today, get some partition walls up. Uh, we've restructured downstairs. Coming along with got the two doors in, all the windows are in, but we do have some layout issues to contend with for sure. This house has been a can of worms for me. I think we can now, because I see this post in place, I think we can now come off and go in and just create a powder room here and it's gonna work. A nice little cubby hole in this area. This will be a ba uh, the bedroom back here. So we're gonna have two big bedrooms, one in the front, one in the back, small in the center. Sean's putting the beam here. The load that's been picked up to re-level this, we're gonna have to do the same right across. So we will drop this wall, put in a new one, bring it to this point, carrying over the beam, and bring that uh, ceiling height up. What I'm thinking of is keeping the bathroom here, Dan. Yep. Using this window in the bathroom, and probably this window in the bedroom. So eight feet by five feet, and if we, if we can create that small hallway here, door into the bathroom, stop the wall here, this will be the door to the bedroom. So it'll come out square, go up, cathedral ceiling down, across. It's kid stuff, so it takes more time. Got a Lego for upstairs. We know the washroom is going to be in the same location as Frank had before. So I'm going to start down in the basement because there's a lot of restructuring upstairs. I don't want to get in their way right now. I'm going to, I wanted to hook up to this stack, but this stack here, they hooked up already and it's loose and I could just pull it out just like that. So the washroom that was connected to this before would have been leaking underground the whole, the whole time anyway. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break the concrete. I'm going to get it back to a point where I can tie into it and then take it and we'll do it all new. Hopefully we don't strike oil <laughs> in this basement. This is the drain that they hooked up to. That's what they hooked up to. So now, um, put a bulkhead right around, bulkhead, bulkhead. We're there. We're there. Yeah, nice. nice. Build the wall. This is gonna be like a brand new house. Better though. We're gonna go until we find it starts to come clean, uh, clean again. We're not picking up any odors. We may or may not even pick it up here. We don't know how laterally, how far it's gone either. So that's the other objective is to find out how wide it's spread. We're gonna be doing one in the driveway, one farther down, one on that side, but also one through the center of the where the tank was. Okay. Because that's gonna be the point of highest concentration. We want to run down one in the depth. And we're gonna put a well in there as well. We're gonna uh, put a well in. Yeah. So we'll monitor for groundwater to see if it's gone and down to the groundwater. Okay. Right. This is the gray material that we were running across earlier. Okay, right at the bottom. Yeah. You can smell the odors in that. Definitely. Yeah. This is the point where we reached last time. So from here forward, as we go deeper, we want to find out how far it's gone down. So the next ones will be critical. And we'll be selecting samples out of these for analysis. So we can get the uh, chemistry on it, know what the numbers are, and that'll help us to determine what the, uh, how large the scope we're dealing with here. We're gonna have to get the stairs out right now so we can start reconstruction to carry the upper load. So as far as I'm concerned, lose everything here. Just take it right out. Just carry it back and temporary support here. Oh, I'm not gonna like to use this. 
Continue a piece in this section up over the beam and then come over four feet with another one right across to the uh, double header there, okay? As this is down, we'll go back up three measure how far we and gotta figure go. how our stairs are going to be. Okay, we've already poured a pad for you in the basement so you can determine where your furnace is going in all your trunk lines today. And what I wanted while I'm here today is to talk about vertical runs. Okay. So we are going to have a bulkhead here, okay? It's going to run right down. You can use this void. We can build a box this big. Uh, if you run any horizontal lines against the uh, floor joists, I want you to come at least three inches away from the studding. So I can get drywall right. directly up, drywall directly over, so I've created a warm zone. We can determine that we can use any run you want along the outside of the, the wall. So that'll help you bring up, carry off, and then just as another example, say one was here. And then one was equally on the other side of the window. I don't care where you come up, but just keep in mind for aesthetics. Okay, Chris. Okay, Pete. Yeah, you pull. What this system is, it's probably this is the best water supply plumbing system you can put in your house. What it is is a pressure balanced system. You have a hot manifold and you have a cold manifold. And from this T to this first valve and the other T to this first valve is equal length. So that, in essence, when this valve is supplying the upstairs hot shower, and this valve is supplying the hot supply for the kitchen, and they're both on, it will dispense from this T equal amount of pressure. And then when the homeowner comes down, it's just like they come to their electrical panel. You know, there's going to be a white 8x10 sheet here marking numbers, all the valves will be numbered, and it will mark all the, the valves, which ones for which. So if you have a problem with your toilet upstairs, that it's running on or whatever, and you want to close it, you can come down here, follow on the sheet, okay, upstairs washroom, it's the third one down. One, two, three, off. It's a little bit of finesse work to make it all nice and neat and equal, but in the end, your flow is tenfold better. So we're ready for you? I had them yesterday concentrate on all outside walls. I'll finish the interior once you sprayed the outside. Great. We're going to uh, spray the soffit shut because there's no ventilation. There. We're going to seal it all off. It's non-vented, totally enclosed. Uh, we're going to come up to the cathedral ceiling here. Now, this is all going to get done in two passes. Just make sure we get the stability in place and the structural strength of the foam. This spot here, we're going to spray foam here. We're going to seal this right up down to here. And then you're going to put your drywall in. We're going to spray it for the back side. And we're going to join up the spray foam here. Otherwise, we have to put it back in here. We've already got it back in this side. We'll spray it for the back side. Okay, so we'll do that afterwards. You can exactly. obviously do that. Yeah, we'll right? make that on the next drill. So when we do the attic with cellulose, well, we're going to do in the attic. Well, we're going to spray the inch foam first on the on the nice on the back side of the drywall. Nice. We're going to we're going to make this thing tight. We're going to heat this place with a candle. So I don't need any vapor bear. No. Nice. There is light at the end of the tunnel. This is almost to the point of drywall, which now we're on the finishing stages. I'm feeling good. As long as it's the same and nobody touches it, you don't have to make changes. But it's funny what you see when you open this up and go, eh, okay. So we have the drywall guys starting the resilient channel on the ceiling. The idea is to true up the ceiling. If you remember the house being cockeyed, we couldn't get it 100% level. Well, what I'm looking for is 100% true. So he's already started in this room. We can see where we've had to shim down to create the 100% trueness that we're looking for on the ceiling. Just one man now, but he's going to have this done. Our whole object, hopefully today, is to get that drywall up, get the spray foam on, get the furnace going so we can heat the house and not be freezing in here anymore. But you know what? It's looking really good. Today, really, it's just the ceiling, and I think you guys can knock that off in about an hour and a half, two hours, for sure. So we'll hit all this. The idea is then to come in, come up, straight up, across here, drywall it down, boom. You can hit one side of every wall. I love this, this drywall being mold resistant, water resistant, so we will use it in the bathroom as well. I would like it very much. If you could run the drywall first as tight as you can to the ductwork, I'm going to double insulate the ductwork. Then I'll build the bulkheads coming out around the ductwork. That'll be the stop of the bulkhead. The beam right there. Right over here? Yeah, that'll okay. be the stop. It'll be 32 inches okay. inside. We're going to mimic the kitchen in here as well. I'm going to be out 16 inches. So that way, if you drywall the ceiling first, we'll create the bulks for you. You come back and boom, you uh, drywall the bulkheads. We're gonna drop the ceiling about, oh, just under that ductwork, right in this void here. Just drop the ceiling, continue the bulkhead out, so it looks like, again, we've all put the ceiling in the dining room. Really, we've done these last little things, the house is yours. You're gonna drywall it, plaster it, and then I'm not coming back until you're done. Perfect. The next thing about these 
close when you work on them out of the top. If I were to come straight down with this, which is a lot of mistake uh, rookies make in the plumbing, will come right down, they'll drop the tub in, and you're right on a joist where uh, your pipe's coming down. So I always measure first, see where my joist is, and if I have to come a little bit this way, a little bit that way. So in this case, we're coming a little bit more towards the wall. Almost done, we're just doing the finishing. Doing up the wiring, low voltage, uh, humidifier, HEPA filter. And when we do the installs, you can see we do a lot of things very neat. The vents are very well supported. You know, it's little minor things, clipping the wires. It's nice and clean, neat looking. A lot of the times we'll silicone the joints for the ductwork to stop the air leakage, or we'll use silver tape on the runs. That way you don't lose any of the air. You know, it's better for the equipment, better for the homeowner. So what we're going to do today is you have to do a water sample, is that correct? Look at the well, it's dry inside, so there's no appreciable accumulation of water. Good. So that's a good sign, all right? The previous results indicate that we, we clean here and against the house and the other samples that we've taken earlier. And the sample that we took at 12 feet, there was a bit of detectable joint, but it was within the allowable limits. Okay. So we know we're clean at that level. So since we know it's only in this area, and I'm really happy about that, we only have to dig out and get rid of the contaminated soil. Right. Okay, so just use this as clean fill, get the other clean fill, top it off, and boom, we're back in business, and we can finish this yard. Exactly. Once they've got the uh, contaminated material down there, we'll be taking a series of confirmatory samples just to verify that it has been okay. removed. It's been removed. Well, do you believe it? We've had to take the tank out, do core sample test 12 feet deep, drill for a while to test the water. Through all this, we're gonna find out the results to see how much earth we have to remove. You can do this whole house in a day? We can do this whole house in one day. Four guys. Three guys. Three guys? Three guys. <laughs> you know how long it takes my guys? A yeah. week. <laughs> but I love them, but it would take them a week. And then I got to repair around some of the boxes. But you know what? They're all learning. They're all doing really good. And it takes years. Like this, that's all these guys do, right? They exactly. eat, breathe, and sleep. The drywall. What happens now is we pre-fill all the joints. Yeah. With the dirt on. So that uh, once the house settles, you know, it doesn't crack as much. And then you put the paper tape on, and that'll dry. And then you come back with a 10-inch machine. Let that dry. And a 12-inch machine that'll dry, and then you skim everything by hand, fix all the imperfections, and then sand it. <laughs> Perfection. Nice and clean and quick. Can you believe that? I like that. Thanks, <laughs> man. <laughs> Normally, I would make sure that I tile all the floors first before I put my cabinets in. So, object for me today is to put in these cabinets because I need this height clearance for the cabinets for perfection. The island will temporarily put in place, remove it again, and finish off the floor and put it back down again. What kind of wood is this? Walnut? Yeah, these are solid walnut frames with a plywood quarter inch panel. And it's an ebony stain on it. And what do you call the front door style? A uh, shaker style. Shaker style. That, that generally means a square edge on the outside and a square edge on the inside. Okay. The dark uh, cabinetry with the stainless steel handles. There's always stainless steel accents in the kitchen with your fridge or your stove or your sink. This 118 inch island, are we checked to set up for plumbing? Yeah, we're fine. We're fine, good. This well, is a dishwasher falling to the right. On the left, we'll have a garbage bin. Nice. It's over there. And I think another cutlery drawer over here. So we're gonna have it say this wide in soldier course. Yeah. You're gonna put any soldier course on the top of the property. Exactly the same as the bottom. Okay, I like that. I've got it the whole place. All new electrical, all new plumbing, heating. The last thing I need to deal with is an old ratty looking fireplace. Simple fix, let's break in front of it, let's install an electric fireplace. It'll work, it'll look good. With the uh, narrower boards, you can play around with it and fix it. But when it's this wide, you have to be on the money. You have to baby it. Oh, start right, get yeah. right. This is perfect. Always pick the length of the room, eh? <laughs> well, you got your windows on each side, so you want to elongate the house. You That's don't want to right. Make it stubby. I think a lot of people don't realize that, that they make that mistake. They think they can run it any which way, where you always want to run the length of the room. Once you're done, I'm bringing my guys in. We're going to cover this up so well, because I'm not going to accept a scratch, nothing. I want it clean, and I want it covered up. This is going to be really nice to see. So all the sheeting is nailed down with roofing nails and not spikes? It would appear that way. Out of sight, out of mind. Like where the customer cannot see what was being done. They come up here, they leave the old vents in. They don't flash the chimneys properly, all right? Because they know the customer is not going to come up here and check it out. Okay. Uh, well, if they've done this, what else have they covered up? We'll have to take it down and look at it. Thank you. 
Put up a new roof. This is minor compared to some of the stuff I saw over on the other side there. It's all rotten. I don't want to see this neither. There's nothing to tie into. You walk on that, fall through, fall off. This is why we have lines. There wasn't even tar paper coming up the side here. I want to see a minimum of weather and ice shield from the roof line to the end gable. They just take in the old crap wood. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, they should have been plywood, but they went right over top. Obviously, we have a rotted area here. This was the hump that we saw earlier, but it's all shingle nails holding it down. I'll bet you pull that up with no problem at all. And you shouldn't be able to pull that up by hand. That's, that's ridiculous. Yeah, imagine the high winds getting underneath that. That's a good shim effect. Yeah, how many layers are there? One, two, three, four. Oh, it's not just a shim. They were short in the plywood. <laughs> I see. So they faked the back. They faked the front. Pitiful. So we're going to strip it. We're going to sheet it with half-inch plywood right over it. Uh, I guess at the same token, we'll pull up any rotten wood that's there, sheet that, and then go over top of that. Yeah. You see little patches they did down there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now they've used a piece of chipboard, which is 7 16 in that area, a piece of 3 8 ply in this area. You can see the height, the elevation difference. And all of that, like the rest of this roof, it just telegraphs through the shingle, and it gives an uneven appearance, and it can actually cause a leak. So much for a simple repair that I called you in to do. Yeah, we wanted just to fix up the venting uh, and get rid of these chimneys, but unfortunately, it's led to a total re-roof. They should be ashamed of themselves just covering this up. They don't care. Oh my god. If anything, that's great for him holding that roof up. <laughs> Flywood is so much stronger. This is crap. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, the outside edge, you can see how they tied in everything. We're going to have to keep the good ones, cut off all the old ones, and get a 2x6 front, come back out again. I'd, I'd rather come up in, but I can't because we spray foamed. I don't have a lot of height over that window, but we probably have enough just to fix it. Let's get the rest off and fix this piece of crap. It is a piece of crap, isn't it's it? It's a total piece of crap. Unfortunately, we were really here just to, to fix some vents, repair a couple of flashings on the chimneys, that sort of thing. But, I mean, the flashings were completely done wrong. The chimneys were non-functional anyways. We got rid of those. The roof boards were completely out of whack and original. So we've ended up having to rip the whole thing off and, and redo it from scratch. What we're putting in here is a layer of ice and water shield. When we took off this, this uh, area of roofing here, we actually noticed a bit of moisture underneath. Uh, some of the shingles and what what this ice and water membrane will do is allow it to wick out on top of this uh, roof as opposed to seeping down in, in, in behind it and this roof's going to be good for at least 25 years it's going to keep anything from happening to the interior all that brand new drywall that brand new paint that brand new kitchen those brand new floors uh, and that's really you know what we need to do here what is this it's a sled it's an old-fashioned sled no I bet you that's the brown part of the bottom very nice Okay. Now who uses that many nails, eh? There's a squeak later. From the first time we've actually put this stuff together at the job site, yeah. but I understand it because it was not, if this was made like this to try and get it in through that door and try and get in a position, it would never. Go. Yeah, I have to agree with that. This isn't a big room, but you want it to look big. That's why there's an open concept ceiling. Use a big tile, less lines, and do a brick pattern. We'll open up the room. What color is that? Corn silk. That's perfect. That'll dry just a little lighter. A little tiny bit lighter once it's dry. Not much. Anytime we're doing growth for the forearms oh. and the wrists, that is an exercise in itself. Definitely. I try to switch hands while I'm going through it. They're actually the best time to dig a tree is when it's dormant, which would be in the spring or in the fall. When it's dormant, you can dig the tree as much as you want, no problem. It doesn't shock it. Um, That's normally what kills them. It's the normally what kills them is the shock. Whoa. I like the little corner. You created yeah. that little corner off there just to give it a little bit of a. I can't actually wait to see that uh, you get this done. What about the tub? What are you doing with the tub? I noticed you didn't get rid of it yet. Oh no! I'm gonna tip the tub on its side, create a bed in front of it, so it looks like it all spilled out and it spilled out soil. And there's gonna be a whole bunch of bulbs planted in the middle, so in the spring she's gonna be in for quite the surprise in her garden. My goal for today is to get all the beds in and planted because we work our way out. We take the beds, plant all the beds, then we do our final grade, and then we lay our sod, roll it, and we're done. We're decking the deck in 2 by 6 by um, 16. The thing about cedar that's great is uh, it's a soft wood. It's like softer than pine uh, to work with, and you know it's uh, going to last because it's an exterior wood. It actually comes from a rainforest, so when it gets rain on it, it doesn't rot. The reason I'm doing such a small gap here is only uh, probably a little over a sixteenth of an inch, is uh, this wood is still fairly wet. Over time, I mean, it's gonna be better if the gap's small now and gets a little bigger later versus doing, I could do a quarter inch or three inch of a gap now, but once the wood shrinks, that'll be up to a half inch. Johnny's done a really nice job of trimming out these windows. What I'm doing is I'm just uh, yeah. doing the corners, I do all the seams with uh, caulking sealant that uh, you can paint to, and it just closes up all your gaps. Uh, any little gaps you see everywhere, it'll, it'll just close these right up and it uh, looks really good on paint. It just makes everything really nice and tight, so I'm gonna finish these up.
we sanded the treads, which makes them very smooth. And we want to look for any manufactured areas, like corners where the riser meets the tread. Anywhere there's a possibility of the manufacturer spilling glue. Then we're going to condition it with water. By using water, it gives us an opportunity to see if there's any glue. I look for those areas, sand that down as far as I can. And you really got to be careful with that because that will not take stain. Water does a tremendous job of conditioning or opening the pores of the wood, allowing it to take evenly. That's basically the biggest trick with staining, making sure it's prepped properly so it accepts the stain evenly throughout. So it's looking really nice. The ones I finished already look great. You ready to put the counter in? Yep, we're ready. Let's do it. Basically it's 93% quartz, 7% resin, and a little bit of color. And they combine them in a formula to give you different looks to them. So they take this and they mix it up, they put it into a mold, and they compress it. So they put 100 tons of pressure on it to make it into a slab. Polished like granite, it's cut like granite, all of it is harder. Low maintenance, no worries. We're just installing all the fixtures, the kitchen sink, faucets and stuff. Uh, here we got a four piece kitchen sink faucet. We've got a sprayer, hot and cold feed, uh, spout and a soap dispenser, where it just pulls out. Put the soap in, pour the soap in, put it back in. This house was plumbed in the uh, IPAX pipe, the, the blue pipe, that the water supply that you see in everywhere. What I'll do now is uh, when it comes through the floor in this kitchen scenario, with IPAX, I'll connect to copper now. So we make sure that we secure the middle one and the whole bottom for strength. The rest are just tacked in, right? The, the pressure of the nail gun, as you're nailing them, when you start at the bottom, if you just nail, it has a tendency to push the handrail up. So when you get to the top, all the pickets are now leaning off level. So if you secure it top and bottom per periodically, then it can handle that type of pressure. Makes sense. He's been doing this for a while. So in this house, uh, we did the ceilings and trim dark and the walls light, which accentuates the ceiling and the trim, and the walls kind of you know, blend in with the bulkheads. Certainly not typical, but I think it looks great in this place. And you know, they've used poplar for the trim. It's a nice trim, so it's gonna it's gonna stand out. Well, the thing is, you can either spend your time on the structure, or you can spend your time on the finishing. We chose to spend our time on the structure, and our finishing is going rather quickly because everything is level and true. Had it been the other way around, and we rushed to the structure and blah blah. Oh, we don't need to do this. We don't need to do that. Then we'd be taking all our time trying to like do unsquare edges and make things right that's like just pain in the butt. So this is really the way to do it. This is level. The door is hanging nice. Now all I have to do, forget throw levels out, I'm just gonna adjust this until I have a nice gap between the door and the jam. And you can see that's a nice gap right there. That's about an eighth of an inch. I know my doorknobs are gonna be at 36. So I'm gonna make a mark. I'm gonna make sure that area is shimmed and reinforced for my lock set. That'll work. Now you can see all the way through. That's a uniform line, and I didn't even use a level once. Normally, we'll install the hood first and then file up to it, but we had the towel guy in, so I said bring it right up and we'll install it afterwards. I had the room because the back of the cabinet is a 5 8 board, much like this thickness, rather than a 1 8 of an inch board that you're used to seeing, a very flimsy backboard. So all I have to do is really drill through the tile. I have to make enough room to allow my toggle bolts to go in and clamp and grab the back of the wall. I have a stud marking here, so it requires that this bracket has at least one screw in the stud. I have that, this one's fine. Under the beat. Okay, sir, it's all yours now. Gas pipe was tested up to the shutoff. So now that we're hooking up the stove, we're gonna test the line from here to the stove to make sure we don't have any leaks. So you would use just a soapy solution uh, soap up all your joints and just make sure you don't have any bubbles. You have no bubbles, you have no leaks. No bubbles, no trouble. through this kind of tragedy that uh, not only was there bad contracting here but a world of pain I'm gonna do my damnedest to make their lives different it's a new day really so for them it's a new day that works for me good oh, wow. wow oh my god oh my god Look at that. Wow, this looks oh, amazing. Well, two weeks ago, we looked at the roof. We went up to put a couple of vents in, realized that the roof was completely rotten and totally done wrong by whoever did it. We stripped the roof, resheated it. We also took the shingles off that uh, dormer. Yeah, I like siding. that look. It's actually what I want, always wanted to do. I really like that look. 
Well, now it's definitely safe. Not to mention all new fascia east trough, downspouts, obviously a new cedar deck for you. We've closed it in. You have a gate on the other side. All new windows and doors. That smells good. It smells good. Doesn't it? <laughs> Come on, let's just walk up and take a look. This family's gone through hell as far as I'm concerned. It's it's now an opportunity that I have to make their life better. Have you been uh, excited waiting? Yes, <laughs> really excited. For sure, definitely. And nervous. Wasn't expecting this though. Wow, this is amazing. Holy crap. Take it down, do it again. It might've been easier if I took the house down and built a new one, but that's their home. This is so nice. I'm gonna soften the lights. Oh, look at how I turn on the porch. Oh, oh that's so cool. cool. New electrical, new plumbing, new heating, new air conditioning, you name it, new. New floors, new cabinets, new, new, new. The only thing that wasn't new was the brick. We kept the old tub because it was Tail's idea to tip it over at the end there and fill it full of tulips so that it will just overflow with tulips coming out of that tub. You don't even know how appropriate that is because my grandmother had a bathtub on her front lawn that she planted flowers in. Is that right? Yeah, she like she used it as a planter. The least that I could do for them was to help change their lives. And it's not often that we see death in the family, and it's not related to the contracting, it's the timing of events. But when things like this happen in life, I think we deserve a change. I think they all, you know, deserve a better step forward. And we have in memory of your mom, her name, the black sky oh, had the wow, meetup. Her very name. Cool. Yep. That's very, very, very cool. This is so nice. Oh, I love it. I'm not gonna go halfway. Halfway doesn't work for me. I either go all the way or I don't do it. Here's one of the major beams that was replaced. All we did was put up two walls right down the room, lift your house, pull up the old one, put in new ones. We had engineers come in uh, from Weyerhaeuser. They were fabulous and helped me uh, restructure and design so I could put it all together. Brand new furnace, air cleaner, HEPA filter. You couldn't probably get a better system for cleaning your air as well as making sure we get rid of any contaminants with the HEPA filter. Brand new washer and dryer Whoa. for you. Awesome. Wow, very nice. Oh, they talk to you. Okay, talk to you. Okay. Isn't that nice? Both of them talk. Okay. Yeah, I think it wants a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we had pulled out all of your hot water system, all the piping, absolutely everything. Uh, and again, we moved the asbestos that was clear right down the center here, and we can see uh, what it took to do that. This is the new IPEX system that we brought in. And what this does is, is extreme pressure balance about the best piping system you can put in your home. We put up a tankless hot water system. Again, one of the most energy efficient things on the market. When your taps are off, it doesn't do anything. It's when you open them up, it fires up instantly. And it only uses gas when you turn the tap on. My reward is each and every time seeing the look on their face when they walk in the door. After you. Oh, wow. wow. What is this gorgeous? Oh man. Holy, oh my God, wow. Oh my God, look at the staircase. Oh, we do have a fireplace. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is nice. So let's talk about what we have done. Let's walk in and take a look. Let's, let's focus on the fireplace at this point. So what we did with the fireplace, because I hated the stone. Oh, come on, you didn't love that piece. I absolutely stone. hated it. So we, we re-bricked it, and we installed an electric fireplace. And also, it's a heater, so you can actually sit and be warm with it, okay? Do you remember your barn board you had in the basement? A good friend of mine, Doug, made you up a table. Oh, wow. This is amazing. <laughs> this is very cool. It's like a harvest table. It's like a harvest table. It's very so nice. So you can push it against the wall and sit around. We've also made them. Well, look God, at your kitchen. Look at the kitchen. Oh, my God. I was able to uh, wow. oh my God. get you all new appliances. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Now they'll expect me to cook. OK, I don't recognize this house. <laughs> this is well, totally different. It's been opened. Come on in. Yes, let us. Oh, I'm ready to walk in. I feel like I'm walking into somebody else's home. I even love on the I side here. I got a new dishwasher. Yeah, here. How do you like that, eh? Oh, this is so cool. So we have one garbage, one disposal. <laughs> this is amazing. I thought that I would have no wall. The kitchen was going to be sitting in the middle no. of the area. Well, if you notice, when you come in, you, it really, you can't really see the kitchen so well. You've got to come around to yeah. see it, right? You gave us beer! <laughs> Get out. That's for celebrating. That's if you want one. <laughs> this is just your simple powder room. It doesn't look simple. Oh my god. Oh god. It's, it's so It's a little nice. different than the other bathroom I saw here. No kidding. Very, very nice. This is real, really nice. I like this. And the mirror. If you notice, I darkened the trim, lightened the walls, and I hit the ceiling in here dark. And it gets into the okay. kitchen, everything else is light color, and then dark again on the ceiling here. It matches all the trim and the baseboards. Let's go take a look upstairs. Now this probably doesn't look the same either. Nice. <laughs> We started from the basement, putting in all new support beams, jacking a house up because it was unlevel, dropping down in the center. So we put in all new support beams, picked it up, which brought it all the way up to the roof line. Major, major load bearing across here. And what we did was try and create a cathedral, so open up the room a bit. If you've noticed, I closed off both sides and gave me a closet on both sides. Okay, so whoever takes this room has a closet on both sides. 
I love the floors. I really love the floors. Actually, so do I. I, I chose the wider place. It just worked for me. This room also has two closets. Because okay. I figured the smaller room must get two closets. This is really, really nice. Oh, wow. Due to the square footage, I was unable to give you two bathrooms upstairs, so I made an ensuite for this bedroom to be able to come into here. Nice and simple. Cute little sink. The idea is to make it look bigger than it actually is. This room I looked at because you had the four bedrooms. It didn't work for me at all that you go through one bedroom to get in the other. I reduced it to the three and made it that you had an area to put the bed with a sitting room on that side of the closet. I've done my part. I can now walk away and help someone else, and I feel damn good about what I do. I feel real good about making their future different. So my job's done, I can go home it's now? It's better than winning the lottery. <laughs> you just won the lottery, I'm telling you. You did, you did. It's better than winning the lottery. Now, did I pass? Oh, yeah, flying colors. Flying colors? Flying flying colors. colors. I don't you. even know how we'll ever, ever thank you. Like, never. We can never thank you for this, never. Well, you know what? Just you getting back home and living a different life, that's thanks enough for me. It's amazing. Come on. Uh, so cool. I love it. Hi, guys. Nice to meet you. I'd say. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Oh, I just look like... It's a really nice home. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. Our pleasure. And Pinky? Yes. Pinky. She worked a little butt off on your house as well? Not as much as that. No, no. Did you like it? I loved it. Oh, I absolutely so happy. loved it. It looks really, really good. Yeah, it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun, and uh, it's strong. I can tell you that much. Oh, yeah. We're going to have wine. We're going to have champagne. We're going to have everything. Okay, let's do it. It's a party. Okay. To the home team. Cheers. Another excellent job. Cheers. Name it. Johnny. Micah. Hey. Cheers, buddy.